Let us go back in time to discover the different arts and crafts of each culture and tradition. This is the episode 2 of Art Wonderland with Mam Ma Ivy and Bong. Art Wanderers, Ma'am Ivy here and you are watching Valenzuela Live. I know you are all excited to explore the beautiful places rich in history. Buckle up and be ready with your paper, pen, and learning packet as we take the Art Wonderful Expedition on the Western Classical Art Traditions only here in the Art Wonderland. But before we begin our Art Wonderful Expedition, let us first be reminded of the protocols to follow during the live streaming class. Protocols to follow during the live streaming class. Respect everyone. Agree to recognize and abide by the protocols in the live stream and respect the feelings, rights, or traditions of everyone. No hate speech. Do not express or discourage violence towards a person or group based on something such as race, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. Be guided with the anti-cyberbullying law. Make sure that everyone feels safe. Bullying of any kind isn't allowed, and degrading comments about things such as race, religion, culture, sexual orientation, gender, or identity will not be tolerated. No promotion of products or items. Give more to this group than you take. Selling of products, self-promotion, spam, and irrelevant links aren't allowed. Use appropriate words in giving suggestions, comments, and queries. We're all in this together to create a welcoming environment. Let's treat everyone with respect. Healthy debates are natural, but kindness is required. After the FB live streaming, attend follow-up discussion in the different platforms provided by your subject teachers such as Messenger, Google Classroom, Google Meet, or MS Teams. Maximize the features of the different platforms to deepen your understanding of the competencies with the help of your subject teachers. I hope everyone will be guided by the protocols for us to maintain order during our session. At the end of our art wonderful expedition, you are expected to analyze art elements and principles in the production of work following the style of a Western and classical art. Identify distinct characteristics of arts during the different art periods. Identify representative artists from various art periods. Reflect on and derive the mood idea, or message from selected artworks. Discuss the use or function of artworks by evaluating their utilization and combination of art elements and principles. Use artworks to derive the traditions or history of an art period. And compare the characteristics of artworks produced in the different art periods. But before we go, I would like you to meet our travel buddy in this art wonderful expedition. Hey Bonky, where are you? What's up art wanderers, it's me Bonky. I will be your tour guide and I will help you in accomplishing different tasks in our art wonderful expedition. Your first task today is to review and identify what era is being described based on our discussion in episode 1 of paintings in western classical art. I will give you 10 seconds for each item. Number 1. Adopt the styles of painting from Greek and Rome but they use Christian subjects instead. You got it right. The correct answer for number 1 is Byzantine. Number 2. It is found inside the caves, subjects are large animals. Yes, very good. The correct answer is from the prehistoric era. Number 3. Subjects usually depict popular legends and love stories, patterns.
Nice. Number 3 answer is from the Gothic era. Let us move to number 4. Number 4. It is commonly found in vases, panels, and tombs, depicts natural figures with dynamic compositions, subjects were battle scenes, mythological figures, and everyday scenes. You are doing great. The correct answer is the Greek era. Number 5. Themes include journey to the underworld introducing the deceased to the gods of the underworld by their protective deities, emphasizes the importance of life after death. Impressive. That is from the Egyptian era. Well done Art Wanderers. It is nice to know that you still remember our previous lesson. Back to you Ma'am Ivy. Thank you Bonky for that Art Wonderful task. Now let us see what you know about the Western Classical Art Traditions by having your second task entitled Classifying Sculptures and Architectures. In this activity, you will classify the different artworks or pictures based on the period or era they belong. You can write your answers in your notebook or you may write it in the comment box to participate. Take it away, Bonky! Number 1. Resurrection of the Virgin If your answer in number 1 is the letter G or Gothic, you are correct. Number 2. Bust of Queen Nefertiti If your answer is letter B or Egyptian, that is right. Number 3. The Last Judgment If your answer is letter F or Romanesque, you are also right. Number 4. Myron, the Discobulus If your answer is letter C or Greek, you are doing great. Number 5. Men here. If your answer is letter A or prehistoric, that is correct. Number 6. The Colosseum. If your answer is letter D or Roman, you are indeed making the right decision. And for the last number 7, Hagia Sophia. If your answer is letter E or Byzantine, you are certainly correct. Wonderful! You've matched all the sculptures and architectures in the following art period. Congratulations! Back to you Ma'am Ivy. Let us now answer the following questions based on our previous task. Classifying sculptures and architectures. You may key in your answers to our comment section or you may write them directly on your answer sheets. Number 1. How did you classify the different artworks into their respective periods? And for number 2 question, what is your basis of classification? You have 30 seconds to answer. Wow! That is a good way of having a basis for classifying artworks based on their period. Good job! I think you are now equipped for our new lesson. We can now go back in time as we visit the different periods of Western classical art and explore the different characteristics, styles, functions, and types of art forms of sculpture and architecture. But first, let us define the meaning of sculpture and architecture. 
Sculptures, the art of making two or three dimensional representative or abstract forms, especially by carving stone or wood or by casting metal or plaster. While architecture is the art and technique of designing and building, as distinguished from the skills associated with construction. Let us start with the sculptures from the ancient period. And under this era, we have the prehistoric and Egyptian era. Welcome to the prehistoric era. Did you know that the materials used in sculptures vary according to region and locality? Archaeologists believe that their sculpture is a result of natural erosion and not of human artistry. Frequently carving may have mythological or religious significance during that time. Sculptures from the Prehistoric Era The first sculpture we have is called the Venus of Willendorf. From 28,000 before Christ's era to 25,000 BC. Why is it called Venus? In Latin terms, it means physical desire, sexual appetite, hence qualities exciting desire, seductiveness, charm, or a goddess personifying sexual attractiveness. As you can see, it is carved from limestone with excessively heavy breasts and abdomen used as a charm to ensure fertility. The next figure is called the Venus of Brassenpool from France. A sculpture of a lady with a hood, it is fragmentary ivory figurine from the Upper Paleolithic era that realistically represents the human face and hairstyle. For the architecture during this period, did you know that during this era, stones and rocks were associated with divinity? Man has developed a form of architecture based on megaliths. In English, means a big rock. From the Greek word lithos means stones and megas means big. This architecture is made of huge standing stones blocks which probably intended for burial. Megalithic monuments have always ignited man's imaginations. It provided plenty of legends and superstitions. There are three main types of megalith stones. The first one is Menhir. A huge stone standing vertically on the ground, usually standing in the middle of the field or arranged in rows. The second one is the dolmen. The word dolmen originated from the expression of taolmen, which means stone table. These structures are in the form of a table consisting of two huge standing stones supporting a horizontal giant stone. It is believed that it serves as a grave or as an altar. The last one is the cromlech, a bitonic word where chrome means bent or curved and elect means lab or flagstones. Literally, it is a circle of standing stones. This is the Stonehenge, the best preserved megalithic site in Europe. Let us move to our next era. Welcome to the ancient Egypt. Did you know that symbolic elements were widely used such as forms, hieroglyphics, Relative size, location, materials, color, actions, and gestures. Their tombs require the most extensive use of sculpture. The most common materials used for sculptures during this era are wood, ivory, and stones. Let us first discuss the characteristics of this period. Number 1. Symbolisms were heavily used to represent the gods. They were represented as a composite creature with animal heads on human bodies. What kind of animal? Examples are the snake or cobra, anubis as black jackal or toth as a white baboon, 
Tawaret was given a hybrid of hippo, crocodile, and a lioness. Number two characteristic is relief compositions were arranged in horizontal lines to record an event or represent an action. A relief is a small mounted sculpture in which the three-dimensional elements are raised from a flat base. Number three, most of the times the gods were shown larger than the humans, the kings larger than their followers, and the dead larger than the living. You will see in the sculptures who are more powerful in terms of their sizes. Number four, the empty spaces in the walls or sculptures were filled with figures or hieroglyphics. The Egyptian hieroglyphic script was one of the writing systems used by the ancient Egyptians to represent their language. In the ancient Egyptian language, hieroglyphics were called Medonetir, the god's words, and it was believed that the writing was invention of the gods. Next is, all individual components were all brought to the plane of representation and laid out like writing. The next characteristic is the exterior walls and interior walls along with columns and piers were covered with hieroglyphics and pictorial frescoes and carvings painted in brilliant colors. Ornamentations were symbolic including scarab or the sacred beetle, solar disc and vulture. Common motifs were palm leaves, buds, flower of lotus and papyrus plants. Temples were aligned with astronomically significant events. It is believed that Egyptians aligned their pyramids and temples toward the north because they believed that their pharaohs became stars in the northern sky after they died. The famous architecture during this period is the pyramids of Giza. The three pyramids are the funerary structure of the three kings of the fourth dynasty. The first pyramid is the Khufu, which is the Great Pyramid was attributed to. Next is Kafa, which whom the pyramid next to the Great Pyramid is attributed. And the Benkaura is the smallest is attributed. These pyramids were made highly confusing and with many tunnels to create confusion for grave robbers. Another architecture from this period is the Egyptian temple that was built to serve as a place of residence for the gods. And the mastaba is a type of Egyptian tomb in the form of a flat roofed rectangular structure with outward sloping sides. It was made of mud bricks or stone. Let us now proceed to the sculptures from the classical period. And under this era, we have the Classical Greek Era and Romantic Era. Welcome to the Classical Greeks. Evolved and showed all the points of human anatomy and proportion after three centuries of experiments. Hellenistic style was one of the most popular styles. Denotes a preference in sculpture for more elaborated patterns a managed arrangement of figures and groups, and an emphasis on the representation of movement for dramatic effects. One of the popular sculptures from this period is Myron, the Discobolus from 450 BC. It is originally sculpted in bronze, shown an attitude of maximum tension, full of compressed energy and about to explode an action. Next are the architectures from this period where temples consisted of central shrine or room in an aisle surrounded by rows or columns. These buildings were designed in one of three architectural styles or orders. Number one is Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. The Parthenon is considered as the greatest classical Greek temple ingeniously engineered to correct an optical illusion. This was made during 447 to 432 BC in Athens.
Now, let's go around Rome. Next era is the classical Roman era wherein most Roman sculptures are made of monumental terracotta. Terracotta is a type of earthenware, is a clay based on glaze or glaze ceramic usually colored brown or red orange. The characteristic of the classical Roman era is they did not attempt to compete with the freestanding Greek words of history or mythology, but rather they produced reliefs in the great Roman triumphal columns with continuous narrative reliefs around. In this era, the famous sculpture was used for the burial of Roman general involved in the campaign of Marcus Aurelius. This is called the Portonatio Sarcophagus between 180 to 190 BCE. This is the best known and most elaborate of all sarcophagus. It is like a box-like funeral receptacle for a dead body. Comes from the Greek word sarks, meaning flesh, and pageant meaning to eat. It depicts battle scenes between Romans and Germans, carved in marble. Another one is the sarcophagus from Servitary between 520 BCE. This is made of terracotta. The length is 6 feet and 7 inches. A husband and wife are shown reclining comfortably as if they were on a couch. Let us proceed to the characteristic of architectures during this period. Romans built sturdy stone structures both for use and to perpetuate their glory. The emperors erected huge halls and arenas for public games, baths, and processions. They built them for gigantic arches of stone, bricks, and concretes or with barrel vaults. The famous architecture from this period is the Colosseum, which was built during 70 to 82 after that in Rome. Moving on, we have the sculpture from the medieval period. Under this, we have the Byzantine era, the Romanesque era, and the Gothic era. Let us now visit the Byzantine Empire. The characteristics from this period are dominant themes or religious, everyday life scenes, and motifs from nature. Animals were used as symbols such as dove, deer, peafowl, while some had acrostic signs, a form of writing in which taking the first letter or a syllable or word of different lines and putting them together. It can be read a message that contains a great theological significance. The Barberini diptych is an early example of Byzantine ivory work. It represents the emperor as a triumphant victor. While architectures from the Byzantine era have a lot in common with early Christian architecture. Mosaic decoration was perfected by the Byzantines, as was the use of clerestory to bring light in form of high windows. Byzantine's advancement in developing the dome created a new style in global architecture. Hagia Sophia, in English, meaning Holy Wisdom is a famous architecture from this period. One of the biggest domes ever created with 108 feet in diameter and because of its grand size, it can still be seen from miles away. It narrates how a magnificent construction transformed from being a church in the mosque and what is now known as the Hagia Sophia Museum. On the other hand, Roman Sculptures characteristics are some of the famous sculptural pieces, are reliquaries, altar frontals, crucifixes, and devotional images. Small individual works of art were generally made of costly materials for royal and aristocratic patrons that were usually carried in the processions both inside and outside the churches. The last judgment was around 1130 CE, an architectural element within the arch or pediment of the West Portal Cathedral of St. Lazar, Autun, Burgundy, France. 
The piece is made of stone and is often attributed to supposed sculpture named Gislevers. Romanesque architecture is the period of great building activities in Europe. Castles, churches, monasteries arose everywhere. This is the groin vaulted piece of Worcester Cathedral that displayed solid masonry walls, rounded arches, and masonry vaults as the distinct characteristic from this period. Aside from that, the doorways of Romanesque churches are often grand sculptured portals. They also use wood or metal for the doors that are surrounded by elaborate stone sculptures arranged in zones to fit architectural elements. For our last destination, we have the Gothic era. This era has greater freedom of style. No longer lay closely against the wall but began to project outward. Figures were given their own attitudes instead of being set into patterns and are livelier and more realistic. Resurrection of the Virgin is the most famous sculpture from this era that was built at the end of 12th century Cathedral Anglings. For the architectures of this period shows two distinct characteristics, pointed arc, which enabled builders to construct much higher ceiling vaults, and stone vaulting was born on a network of stone ribs supported by piers and plastered pillars. Here is the Cathedral of Chartres, best known as the Notre Dame Cathedral, that was built during 1145 to 1260. Its distinct characteristic is rich in architecture and design, with splendid stained glass windows and thousands of sculptured figures. And that's it! We are done with the sculptures and architectures from the Asian period. Hello Art Wanderers! It was an art wonderful time travel from the past. To check your knowledge, let us answer versus activity in your module. I challenge you to fill in the box with the characteristics and functions that would best describe the sculptures and architectures that we will choose in different era or period. Take note of this activity and submit your answers to your MAPE teachers. Ma'am Ivy, back to you. Thank you Bonky for another art wonderful task. Remember that in every period that has passed, it leaves a remarkable contribution in the different forms of art that has shown a noticeable influence in the arts of the new world. From the early age to the medieval period, every art has very rich characteristics serves specific functions in their beliefs, and becomes the key in understanding how the people in the ancient times live. Quiz time! Let us now check your knowledge of the things that you have learned by answering the following questions. You may key in your answers to our comment section, or you can write them directly on your modules. You will be given 5 seconds for each item. Here's once again, here's our travel body Bonky to facilitate your test. Take it away Bonky! Number 1. A stone coffin, often inscribed or decorated with sculpture. Letter A. Megaliths. B. Pyramid. C. Sarcophagus. D. Tomb. The correct answer is the letter C. Sarcophagus. Number 2. A sarcophagus sculpture wherein a husband and wife are shown reclining comfortably as if they were on a couch. Letter A. The Last Judgment. B. Myron. C. Queen Nefertiti. D. Sarcophagus, from Servitiri. If you answer letter D. Sarcophagus from Servitiri, that is right. Number 3. One of the popular style sculptures in this period is the Hellenistic style. Letter A Ancient Egypt B Greek Classical C Prehistoric D Roman Classical If you answer the letter B Greek Classical, you are also right. Test 2. Matching type, match column A with column B. Here are the name of the artworks. Number 4. Notre Dame Cathedral Number 5. Megalith Stones 
Number 6. Hagia Sophia. Number 7. The Parthenon. Number 8. The Groin Vaulted Crypt of Worcester Cathedral. Period slash era. Letter A Prehistoric. B Ancient Egypt. C Greek Classical. D Roman Classical. E Romanesque. F Byzantine. G Gothic. You have 20 seconds to answer. Here are the answers. Did you get all the answers correctly? Excellent job Art Wanderers. Back to you ma'am Ivy. Thank you so much Bonky and great job Art Wanderers. It was a long journey right? I hope you do not have jet lag. Once again this is ma'am Ivy your wonder art teacher and always remember we may have different art traditions based on our culture and beliefs. But these differences should not separate us. And remember to respect and be kind to others. Stay safe everyone, have a good day, and see you on our next tour!